everyone, my name is Hope and welcome back to my channel. I like musicals, they're a part of my life and today. I'm going to be telling you some of my assessment results. So if you didn't already know and if you've not been watching me for a while, you may not know that I went to Italia Conti and did a foundation year. Don't know where my voice is going, not questioning it. And obviously because I did a foundation year, I had to do exams to pass my foundation year. And even though it's now April and I finished my course in July, I have only just got my certificate with my results on it. So I do want to say I did pass. I got a merit overall. So there's pass, merit and distinction. And I think the percentages are 50 to 59% is a pass, 60 to 69% is a merit and 70 plus is a distinction. Now I was pretty happy with this. As far as I'm aware, only one person in my year actually got a distinction and I was very aware that that person was never going to be me. I think that my time at Conti was one that I'll definitely remember. I met some amazing people and I, I'm not doubting that for a second, like two of my best, like my best friends of all time, I met there. And so I'm eternally thankful for that. But it wasn't without its fair share of trials and tribulations. Let's just put it that way. But I thought I would share with you my results because first of all, numbers don't matter. Like they literally do not matter, especially in this career. Like no one's gonna care if you only just passed your ballet exam in your first year. Do you know what I mean? Like no one's gonna care as long as you get your degree. But even then they don't care if you have a degree. You do, but they don't. So I just feel like it's something worth talking talking about. Do you know what I mean? And I have no idea if I'm allowed to share these results. I see no reason why not, but also if I did, what are they gonna do? Stop me from doing my degree? I think not. So before I get into this video, remember that you can like, comment, subscribe, all the fun stuff that you may enjoy doing. Also hitting the bell, even though I really don't know what that does, but you could hit it anyway. Remember that you can also follow me at social media. You can get me at xhopewilsonx on Instagram and you can get me at hopewilson45 on TikTok and Twitter. But without further further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going to go through what all of the topics, modules, modules is a better word for it, what all the modules are, and then I'm just going to tell you the score, but I'm going to explain what goes into the score because I feel like it'll be unclear otherwise. So the first two modules I have are musical theatre one and two. These are the same thing, but assessed twice. So musical theatre one was the autumn term, the first term of Conti that I did, and the musical theatre two is the second term. Musical theatre pretty much does what it says on the tin, it was marking my musical theatre classes where basically we would learn numbers and then at the end of term we would perform one of those numbers to the rest of the school. Term one was an interesting one for us in um, group D which was the group that I was in. We were supposed to do the Witches of Eastwick numbers which for us was Dirty Laundry and Eastwick Seas. That was always the plan. Like everyone, every group kind of knew what number they were going to get and I'm going to use B because this is how I, why it gets important. B was supposed to do elegance from Hello Dolly. Now, our class hated elegance. We couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. You know, we didn't know the choreo. We didn't know the spacing. We barely knew the words. Like, we hated that number. We hated it. And we were so bad at it. And I feel like everyone in that class would admit that, right? But the Witches of Eastwick numbers, we were slaying those numbers. We were doing great. But the thing is, right, the teachers pick what numbers you do. We don't. So the numbers roll around and they get told to us. And we get told we're doing elegance. Now, bear in mind that the week before this, the week before we found out, our teacher, who taught us all of the numbers bar one which was the witches of eastwick numbers had cried in lesson because we were so bad we were so bad she cried and then she gave us the number and we were all mad we were mad there was <laughs> on the day we found out she walked through like we were waiting for another class she walked past we all sat there like it was criminal it was criminal and it turns out the reason we got elegance and not witches because B ended up getting witches was because everyone in B had got shin splints and 
elegance there was a lot of basically like going up and down like on your shins it's kind of hard to explain but like essentially your foot was going like this on the floor and so they got witches and we got elegance now it turns out that we we banded together and we worked so hard to make that number better and when we performed it it was actually a lot of people's favorite number but nonetheless i hated that number and i think my score kind of reflects that a little bit um because in musical theater one i got 60 which is obviously like the baseline for a merit in that. I hated elegance. I just couldn't do it. Like even when we were performing it, I still had very little idea what was going on. And that's not for lack of trying. Like I literally tried so hard just for some reason, the number would just not go in my head. And there was a lot of coordination and not being aware that I was dyspraxic at the time. It seriously impacted my studies. And I just want to say like me and not realizing that I was extremely neurodivergent at the time had some had some serious reflections in my grades. But like I said, it doesn't matter and nor do I care. So in musical theater one, I got a 60. Musical theater two, so assessed on the same thing, but different numbers, we learned six numbers, but only four of them are going to be performed because there was four groups. And this one went a lot better for me. We did Too Darn Hot from Kiss Me Kate, which was the number we ended up performing. And I loved it. I was in my feels in that number. I enjoyed it. It was a challenge, but not so much so that I was like completely lost. And we had changed changed groups. I was still in D, but d group D was like a different group, if that makes sense. Like I swear there was only like three people from the original D who were in D in second term. Anyway, yeah. So, and we just kind of vied with that number like a lot. Like we kind of knew before we found out that we were going to get too darn hot, but we weren't like mad about that. That was the number we kind of wanted because we felt like it was the number that we did best. And I felt like in second term, everyone got the numbers that they were kind of supposed to get. I think everyone had kind of predict, everyone was just not sure because it was a Mean Girls medley. It was Cautionary Tale. Oh, where do you belong? It was those two numbers. And no one kind of knew who was gonna get that, but everyone had heard that A had was doing it really well. So we were like, oh, they'll probably get it. But yes, we did Two Don Hoff from Kiss Me Kate, which is just a great song anyway. And I think, we, yeah, like I said, we all just vibed with it and we all got it more. We had the same teacher as we did in first term, right? But this number just seemed to make a lot more sense. And even though the numbers were actually harder, like the numbers were a lot harder in second term than they were in first, we somehow, I think, did them better. But I'm choosing not to question it. But in Musical Theatre 2, I got 64. Also, you're probably thinking, given that you said you did a lot better, four marks really isn't a lot. But you have to think that like the way it's graded is like banded. So 64 is kind of like a mid merit, whereas 60 is kind of like that is just about a merit and one thing i find really weird about the way that conti marks like I, I read like my reports from like throughout the year and being good at it like factors in but in reality has very little to do with your overall grades like there isn't like a you're good at this box I think it just factors into a lot of things, but a lot of the marking is to do with understanding, applying, remembering, and being dyspraxic. That is all very difficult for me. And while this one was better, and also we had way more time to practice this one, but like we learned this number pretty quick and that just made it just my life so much easier. But yes, I got 64 for Musical Theatre 2. Next, we have Introduction to Audition Technique. Now, these were interesting classes for me, as was every class at Conti. And you were basically marked on audition singing, audition acting, and audition dance. These were like specific lessons. I may be getting these the wrong way around because there's also audition practice, but I'm pretty sure it's this way around, so I'm just gonna go with it. So, we basically had lessons in audition acting, audition dance, and audition singing, and it would basically be where you do your songs or your monologues or you'd like learn a dance in a lesson and then have to perform it. These were not good lessons for me. Weirdly, audition dance was my favorite, and I was so bad. I think it was the teacher. I had this teacher called Lawrence, and he was lovely. I loved him. He really liked me. And it just made me feel so much better about it. But like I said, dyspraxia. Also, pretty sure I've got autism. Not a good mix for trying to learn and remember things in short spaces of time, right? It was stressful. I got upset a lot. Weirdly, I got way more upset in lessons like commercial because I was so, we're not even talking about that. But it was a very stressful situation for me, nonetheless. Also, I hate getting up in front of people and singing a song. I still do. You might think, Hope, aren't you a singer first? Yes. Yes, I am. And I still hate it. I 
it, I have no confidence. I not fun. Really, really don't like it. Get me up on a stage. I'll be all right. Get me in an audition situation. Absolutely not. Does this bode well for me in the future? Not really. But I've got three years to figure it out. So I guess it's fine. But yeah, my audition singing teacher. Honestly, I don't really think she liked anyone. But I definitely don't think she liked me. Also, I picked a song time for my audition song. And every time she saw it, she was like... So that was that. My audition acting, honestly, it was kind of my fault, but I I did not learn my monologue. Okay, so they were like, please learn your monologue by this date. And of course, nobody did. Literally, it was like te- it was like an hour before the lesson and everyone was learning it. I had already started learning my monologue at this point. I kind of knew like half. But sometimes if you're like neurodivergent, and I don't know if this goes for all people, but it definitely goes for me. Sometimes your brain just absorbs zero information. You can read something a million times, you can try really hard to remember it you're not going to and this was one of those times so we went into the lesson and like i said nobody knew it but of course they were like let's pick at random who's gonna go at the end of the lesson i was one of those people and it was a shambles literally couldn't remember a single line and also the teacher i'd had a couple of digs at before because not naming who it was but um we played more games than we did actual work and given that i'd literally ran it maybe twice total over the span of like 12 weeks i was a little bit mad as i think most people would be so uh, we didn't really get along honestly they gave me surprisingly good feedback on my report so maybe that had absolutely nothing to do with it but in intro to audition technique i got a 59 which is a pass it's almost a merit but it's not and like i said i'm not really surprised i'm not surprised because if I'm like objectively looking at my performance, it was a bit shocking. But like I said, I also did find it really, really hard because intro to audition technique, as far as I can remember, was like first term-ish. I actually didn't have Lawrence in first term. I had him in second term. But I can't for the life of me remember if I had audition dance in first term and who it was. So yeah, if it's the teacher I think I had for audition dance in first term, didn't like me but honestly didn't like me in tap because they were also my tap teacher and tap was rough last year let me just say that but i got 59 and do i care got 59 and it's not the end of my world like i pass i'm here numbers don't define you okay let me move on to audition practice now i think this was just my singing dancing and acting classes so i had things i think it was the three main teachers so surprisingly i don't think it was singing tech i think it may have been rep but i'll be perfectly honest i was reading my report and it only has the initials of teachers and i didn't remember who a lot of the teachers were i was like who is this i don't know but yeah so we were basically assessed on our singing classes dance classes and acting classes this was fine for me if i'm honest i really don't remember what i did or where i was or what i was doing in those classes so i can't really explain this module to you because it's kind of just a summative thing of were you good in classes i guess i think this was like a researching slash rehearsing module but like i said i don't remember so i'm just gonna tell you my score so i got a 61 and given that i really couldn't remember anything about it i'm not too mad about it like i did fine don't remember what it was for but i did fine in something and that's good enough for me okay i have two more modules i'm gonna do the more the the less exciting module first even though it's actually my last module and that is contextual studies contextual studies is like the written part of my assessments essentially so in first term i had to write my personal statement because that matters and i had to write about drama schools and some other things that i like i I think i had to do like a cv and stuff i actually don't remember but it was like six pages i had to do reflective practice which is the bane of everyone's existence and basically i got that and i remember i got a 64 for that which was first term but i don't actually think that counted towards my exam because my overall score is what i got in my second term assessment which is like the overall module so in second term we had to write an essay and you had to write it as if you were 
a performer in a musical and how you would be in that musical as an ensemble and like how you would put together the show and stuff kind of like that. I remember I did mine on the Star Kid musical, the, d- the Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals, and I think I called it something like The Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals, a retrospective using Brechtian influence and how you would work in an ensemble. That was like my title or something. It was a really bougie title, and I literally started it talking about the pandemic because this was 2023, and I was comparing the alien invasion in the guy didn't the musical alien invasion to the pandemic that was my opening but apparently it did well because i got a 67 the 67 was the highest grade that i got in my course overall which i think is very true to form for me because i am quite eloquent with writing didn't quite work out the same for my um my first term assessments here but we're not talking about that but yeah i i think most people in my year could say that contextual studies was a special class to say the least because we had just about just about as much idea of what we were being examined on than the teachers did essentially our contextual studies teacher left in december and they weren't that helpful to begin with so when we got a new teacher in january they had never taught the subject before and therefore had absolutely no idea what was going on but i got a 67 so i'm not complaining and honestly who is surprised honestly I'm calling it a success. Okay, my last module, which was called Rehearsal and Performance, was, I think, the most evident example of how my dyspraxia directly affected my result. So, Rehearsal and Performance was the, like, third term module. It was the only thing we were getting assessed on in third term. We were working towards a showcase and we had to do auditions and learn the numbers and then perform the numbers in front of people and that was our assessment. Now we had to learn these numbers in a very short space of time and there was absolutely no structure to what we were doing. Like I remember there were some numbers that weren't being auditioned till like a week and a half before the show hadn't even auditioned them we hadn't even learned them which was obviously stressful it seemed like no teacher was really in communication with another and also it didn't really seem like they cared about us at all now this isn't bashing Conte I'm not trying to do that I'm just saying it how it was they didn't care about us and that was fine I didn't care about them either but essentially the lack of structure and the lack of clarity on what we were doing, when we were doing it, when we were learning it, how we were learning it, had a serious impact on my education, right? There was a number that was, I think, I think it was like a five to six minute long number, and we spent 22 hours of lesson time learning it. For reference, the week before with a separate teacher we had learned a two and a half minute number in one lesson which is an hour so if we were going at that equal rate of learning the number it would have taken us three hours and not 22. me and that teacher also just didn't get along but that was not my fault and i will stand by that they were ignorant I feel like is the best word to put. And again, I'm not trying to be like, Conti is not a nice place because that's not true. This woman was very much an exception to that rule, but teachers agreed with me. She had been rude to me and to other people in my year for separate reasons. And that class was rough. Uh, it was it was rough for everyone, especially me. But yeah, so the module was all about rehearsing the numbers for the showcase and then performing in the showcase. And not knowing what was going on, having this random timetable, not like barely knowing songs and dances and we were putting them all together. I was stressed and I didn't know what was going on. I was going over that stuff all the time, but wasn't going in at all and in the performance even then i'm so i was so much in my own head about everything like this may not seem that deep when i'm saying it right but 
we did a set of Chicago numbers and I was like one of the main people in all that jazz. Like I was one of the mains, like I started the song and stuff like that. And I had to get up on a table, right? And to most people that's not that deep, but not only am I extremely clumsy, I had to do it in heels and I had to get up from a plastic chair to a table which was on wheels and was not the most stable of tables, right? And that stressed me out massively because I, like a week or two weeks before, I'd almost fallen off the table because the table was not set properly. I was setting it myself, but the table was broken and I didn't know that. And also having to do it seamlessly and look normal, I I couldn't. I I genuinely, I really couldn't. Could probably do it now, but at the time, no. It just, it was not a good time for me and it showed like a lot of the numbers I was just stressed there was we had some like just solely dance numbers and when I was at the front I was doubting everything and you can see you could see it on my face as I was performing I was like am I going the right way am I not going the right way because we'd literally like not done it away from the mirrors that many times if ever I don't remember an explicit time except for in the dress rehearsal. And also, again, this is probably a neurodivergent thing. We were doing it facing the wrong way. So when we were rehearsing it, we were like forward facing. But in the performance space, we were like backwards facing in my head. So I was having to reverse everything in my own head to figure out where I was and what I was doing. Again, this wasn't anyone necessarily anyone's fault because no one, including me, knew I was dyspraxic at the time. But it made my life so hard. Like looking back on it, if I would have known I was dyspraxic, my life could have been a whole lot easier. I'll tell you that. But I got a 56, which is the lowest score. Like my third term, which supposedly would should have been my highest score because my scores in my head, it would make sense to go like this because over the course of the year, you're getting better, was my lowest score because the the way it was run just didn't work for my brain. And so I suffered immensely. And I just remember when we were doing the shows, I just remember like everyone was crying and really sad. I was like get me out of here like I just I had stopped caring at that point because it had become more of a struggle than something I could enjoy and again like I feel like I need to like reinforce this is not me saying don't go to Conti because that's not true like I have friends there who love it it works for them and that's great I am so happy that they get to go to a place that they love and they enjoy and that they can get better at I'm really happy for those people. I was just not one of those people. And that's kind of what made the difference. I think that's why I basically uploaded no Conti content ever. Because I was just so stressed all the time and didn't quite ever feel feel like I fitted in. And I was there for nine months. Like there are like I said, there are people who go there who love it and it's great. And I'm so happy for them. And I'm happy that now I'm in a place where I I don't feel like that anymore. But I think my like mental health and my neurodiversity and all of these small things just made Conti so much harder than it needed to be for me. And I think you could definitely tell that in my results because the terms and the modules where I had more time, more prep, knew what was going on and when it was going on, I did a lot better in. I had 12 weeks to write my essay and I did and I did well. I had lots of time to learn the number that I was performing and I performed it well. And yes, I know that the industry doesn't work like that and sometimes you can literally learn a role in a week and go on. I know that. But for my first like time doing like a drama school experience or like this first time in full-time training, It was just a lot that I wasn't prepared for and didn't feel prepared by them for. But like, I can't be like, I wish I never did it because that's not true. Literally, the foundation helped me get into Erdang. Do you know what I mean? Like, the Conti Foundies last year did really well. Nearly all of them are being successful. I think there's seven of us here at Erdang from an 86 person year and there are... I think like 30 odd are still at Conti, there's like six at EDA, a few at Mount View, a few at Arts, 
a few at PPA. Like, they did really well. Like, we as a year did really well. And it was because of Conti. Like, I don't think we can just put it down to we suddenly became amazing in the span of a year and they wanted us then. Do you know what I mean? Like, we have to give it to them. They helped us be where we are now. And so I am thankful for going. Like, I think it was worth it. It was just hard, like everything is. It wasn't quite for me, but that's okay. And like I said, numbers don't matter. Like I came out with a 62% average, which was a low merit, but it didn't stop me from getting into Erdang. People who got higher percentages of me didn't get in here, but got in other places that I didn't get into. Drama school is so subjective and some places are going to want you and some aren't. And that's pretty much how it works. Like you're not built for every course. You're not built for every school. And I think schools know that. So if you don't get in first time, I love how I'm just completely changed what I'm talking about, but I feel like it's worth talking about anyway. Um, if you don't get in somewhere first time. Like, it doesn't mean they're never going to want you. Like, I auditioned for Erdang three times, got into my third time. They want me now, do you know what I mean? Like, don't put yourself down if you didn't get into, like, your dream school. Like, you don't know what's waiting for you and something could be waiting for you that you don't even know is real. Yeah, you know? But I think that's all I have to say. Those were my foundation year drama school assessment results. Like I said, don't put a value on your self-worth and your talent because no one else is going to, you know what I mean? It's not that deep, but thank you so, so much for watching. Like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Follow me on all my social medias. Keep enjoying Moose Calls as much as me, and I will see you in the next one.